uh, good day, dear colleagues. Uh, we are very glad to invite you to participate in the discussion organized in the framework of the International Scientific and Practical Conference, Hours of Reading 19, uh, 30 years of the Kazakhstan independence. Uh, that is the scientific and international uh, information uh, platform for the second Central Asia Nobel Fest Live, which provides opportunities uh, for all categories of scientists to take part in online discussions. So, uh, currently, all the world is faced with the serious problem of the coronavirus uh, pandemic, uh, which uh, influences on all aspects of human life, including the uh, science and education. But nevertheless, uh, all scientists continue to work uh, in the field of science and education for their benefits. Uh, I would like to... Um, <coughs> introduce uh, our colleagues from the uh, partner universities of the Mukhtar Aouz of uh, South Kazakhstan University uh, who work in the project, joint project, EDUNV, enhancing competences of the sustainable waste management in Kazakh and Russian higher educational establishments of the Erasmus Plus program. So, uh, colleagues from the University of Valladolid, uh, this is one of the most important university in this Spain. Uh, Silvio Bolada Rodriguez, full professor in chemical engineering and heat of the environmental technology research group and Pedro Garcia in Sina, uh, also full professor in environmental engineering and heat of the Institute of Sustainable Processes and colleague from Ural uh, Federal University named after first president of Russia, Yeltsin, uh, Professor Sergei Nikolaevich Palbitsin. So I would like to give opportunity to share their experience to our colleagues from the uh, Valladolid University, uh, professors um, uh, Pedro Garcia and Silvia Bolado. Please, uh, you can uh, give your information about your university and about area of your research and uh, give uh, some of the uh, information, what the methodology do you use during this uh, pandemic uh, for the online environment. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, Silvia. Uh -huh. Silvia, uh -huh. can you... Uh, the microphone is mute, Silvia. Yes, yes, uh -huh, muted. Uh, Sylvia, can you switch on the microphone? Your microphone is switched off. Okay. Oh, yes, uh -huh. it's okay now <laughs> because it was missing. <laughs> okay. Pedro, please, do you do? Or? Uh, can, can you share the, the screen and you can explore, okay. I think so. Uh, can I share? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's for me? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yes, you can include the demonstration of the screen. No. Yes. Have you the screen? No, we cannot see. Yes. I was sharing. No, yeah, yes, no. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I don't know what is the problem because it's really. Uh, please uh, switch. It's not working. Yes, but it, it, it's a slow. Yeah, very slow. Now, yes. <laughs> okay. This one. This one. Okay. Could you start or? Yes. No? Okay, I, I can make an introduction. First of all, uh, thanks to Otagot and OF of University for inviting us to this uh, meeting. And uh, I'm going to introduce uh, a little bit about the, our university. Our university is the University of... Uh, I, can you move them? Silvia? Okay. Our university is uh, one of the oldest universities in, in Spain. And it was founded in the 13th century. 
And at this moment, our university has more than 100 degrees and 50 postgraduate masters and 80 doctorate uh, programs. Uh, it's a historic uh, university because it's uh, one of the oldest uh, universities in, in Spain and, and Europe. Let's go and see that. Well, here we, you can see some of the photos of our university in the upper uh, left is the central building. No, you know, is the low faculty of the university is the historic building. And the south right is the rectorate of the university that is also an historic building. The other are some new buildings in our university. The university has four campuses uh, in four different provinces. The main campus is in our city, in Valladolid. The total number of students is around uh, 20, a little bit more than 20,000. And the number of uh, teaching staff is 200, uh, sorry, 2,500. And uh, a little bit less than 1,000 administrative uh, staff. Valladolid is located in the center of Spain. You can see in the right upper part, this is Cast the red uh, zone is Castilla and Leon, is our region, is uh, the biggest region in the uh, European community. And in the right uh, down, you can see the four provinces in which the University of Valladolid has its camp the, the campuses. Next one. Okay, Valladolid is, uh, is near to Madrid, to the capital of uh, Spain, something like a little bit less than 200 uh, kilometers. It's a medium size, a medium size for, for Spain city with uh, 300,000 inhabitants. And as I said, it's located, is the capital, the theoretical capital of the biggest region in the Europe, European Union with almost uh, 100,000 square kilometers. And Valladolid was the capital of uh, Spain and the, at the beginning of the 16th century. Here you can see some photos uh, of the, some of the ma main representative uh, buildings of uh, our city. The one, please. Okay. The University of uh, Valladolid, the, in the Valladolid campus, has uh, 12 uh, faculties uh, and school, and we are located, uh, our department is located in the Higher Technical School of Industrial Engineering. At, the, at this moment, we belong to this, uh, to this school. Uh, I, I would like to, to emphasize some of the, our programs, our international uh, programs. These are uh, programs teach it, teach it in English, and they are focused to, uh, to attract some students for, for another countries. They are, all of these programs are semester. They are in the first or take place in the, in the first or in the second semester. And one of them is related with engineering, in which uh, we teach uh, one of the of the subjects. There are al another international semester in commerce, in education, and also in forestry. And uh, as I say, this is uh, one of the things that our university is doing in order to improve the entrance of uh, foreign students. At this moment, our university has um, more than 450 active agreements with uh, another in institutes, another universities, oriented to uh, the obtention of a PhD, well, in order to make a, a, a students exchange as Erasmus or international exchange, and other, other, and other activities as a PhD co-tutels, double degrees agreement for bachelor and for master. And related with these uh, double agreements, in the uh, next one, we have here some of the double degrees uh, in our uh, uh, studies. And you can see at the bachelor level, there is a double agreement in chemical engineering in our department with the Ecole Nationale Supérieure de Chimie de, de Paris. And at master level, uh, we manage uh, an environmental engineering master and we have uh, three 
uh, double degrees agreement at the master level with Soka University in Japan, with the UNAM in Mexico, and the Vietnam National University of Science, of course, in, in Vietnam. Yeah, one, yeah. Sorry? Oh, sorry. And uh, our university is also very active in Erasmus uh, Key A, and we have different uh, agreements uh, with uh, different uh, with uh, a lot of uh, countries in, in the world. As you can see, the for the period 2018 to 2020, we have an, uh, an agreement which includes uh, Kazakhstan and. At this moment, in the 2021 to 2022, uh, there is a call for 180 grants that, that it's uh, open. I don't know if at this moment yes. it's open. Or... Yes, yes, it's open at this time. Yeah. Until, uh, I don't know the day on, on April, but it's open. Okay. Okay, here is the our uh, the, the rectorate is a building of the 15th, the end of the 15th century. And here is the, the, the office of the rectorate, not the administrative office of the university, but the, the office of the rectorate. And then after this uh, introduction of our university, I'm going to explain you something about uh, our research uh, related with the Institute of uh, Sustainable Processes. This uh, institute was uh, created something like uh, three years uh, ago, and we tried to integrate in the in the same research group different uh, research activity oriented to facing environmental challenges, mainly related with the green technologies, the optimization of green technologies, and the op optimization and control tools. And this, uh, our activities include uh, different uh, research areas as anaerobic uh, digestion, biomass valorization, auto treatment, control of uh, emerging pollutants, microalgae processes, optimization, supervision, and control of uh, wastewater and other kind of uh, uh, other um, production plants. Biogas upgrading, uh, wastewater treatment and other treatment, and synthesis and integrated process uh, design. We are mainly focused on uh, environmental processes or uh, an environmental point of view in order to improve the processes. Our mission is to generate uh, high quality knowledge in order to apply to innovative tools and technologies, looking for efficiency and sustainability to get a socioeconomic environment and to improve the socioeconomic environment. Our research institute is divided in four areas. These areas are clean energy, clean environment, use of resources, and process optimization for a circular economy. The institute is composed by 70, around 75 researchers, uh, of which 33 are uh, professors of the university, 11 are postdoc. At this moment, there are 20, between 20 and 25 uh, pre-docs and eight uh, technical staff. The main research uh, activities the way trying to, to look for the development of sustainable processes for the treatment, recovery, and valorization of pollutants. More of these uh, processes are based on biotechnologies with uh, low cost. Then our objective is to uh, obtain a high efficiency, lower impact, uh, and lower cost, uh, low cost uh, processes. Some of these uh, processes are basic in sorry one of sorry one of the lines of these processes is uh, oriented to the solid waste uh, valorization. This solid waste uh, could be lignol cellulosic materials or uh, activated uh, sludge or microalgae that we obtain in different uh, processes. The idea uh, we also focus on the wastewater treatment. Uh, some of the researchers in, in our institute 
has uh, more than 30, 35 years of experience in wastewater treatment, mainly anaerobic uh, processes. And at this moment, we are focused on the use of membrane bioreactors, anaerobic membrane bioreactors. The study of the term, determination of the study of the behavior of energy pollutants in wastewater treatment and the use of microalgae-based wastewater treatment to remove different kind of uh, pollutants. And also, another line is related with the bio, biological gas treatment in order to remove uh, odors, volatile organic compounds, and also as a treatment processes to upgrade biogas that we obtain in, in aerobic uh, processes. All of these uh, with, uh, uh, with research processes are uh, <clears throat> completed with the uh, life cycle analysis in order to determine the environmental impact and the use of different uh, molecular techniques, uh, uh, molecular techniques and system biology techniques in order to know the evolution of uh, the biological processes that because the main or the majority of the processes that we uh, use are biological one. And okay, uh, some of the I, I'm going to to present uh, briefly some of the lines that we are uh, working on. And one of them is uh, emerging pollutants, mainly pharmaceutical and personal care products. We are, have been. We have done some research in order to analyze the environmental risks, to characterize these uh, compounds, and to determine the degradability uh, biological by means of biological processes or by means of photochemical uh, processes. Uh, together, we uh, study the absorption of these uh, compounds. Another uh, important research line is related with anaerobic digestion and mainly with the biogas uh, production up and upgrading of the biogas. Here you, we can see some of the, the upper part, uh, large scale reactors. This is one membrane bio, anaerobic membrane bioreactors to, for the treatment of uh, wastewater. At this moment, we consider that the biogas production for different of organic waste, not only wastewater, but other uh, solid waste, is uh, filled with the uh, high, uh, with high opportunities in order to produce biogas and to use biogas as a renewable fuel. The next uh, slide here we have the uh, integration of different processes, in this case, the use of a microalgae uh, process in order to uh, improve, to upgrade the quality of the biogas. In this case, we use raw biogas, it has uh, methane and CO2 in a absorption column in order to uh, absorb the CO2 that is introduced in the microalgae reactor, in the photobio reactor, for the growth of a microalgae. In this way, we can upgrade biogas, sorry, in order to obtain a, a high concentration of, uh, of methane, and at the same time, we are using the CO2 to, to produce a microalgae that we can use later as a raw material. In the next one, we have Yes, as I was saying, uh, we are producing different kind of uh, materials that we can uh, use to produce valuable, uh, oh, yes, other valuable pr products. Uh, in this case, we have uh, this is oriented to the valorization of uh, microalgae. The microalgae has as every kind of uh, compounds, carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins, and our idea is to produce, uh, to obtain this uh, kind of uh, compounds in order to obtain some valuable products. I don't know if you can, uh, Celia, include something yes. more about uh, No, 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 it's okay. okay. <laughs> I think because uh, Silvia is the leader of this uh, 
this topic, this research uh, line. Uh, other important uh, research line is related with the valorization of the biogas. We are producing biogas in anaerobic uh, reactors, but we can use this biogas as an energy vector, but we can use also as a raw materials in order to produce some valuable products. In this case, we use uh, methanotrophs in order to produce ectoin and PHA. These uh, are mainly ectoin, is a very, very high value uh, product that is used in some uh, personal care uh, products. Then we are transforming a low uh, value product as biogas to high value. Uh, this, uh, Studies usually of this research uh, project usually are complemented with an uh, analysis, analysis of a uh, life cycle analysis of the process in order to determine the environmental impact and in order to determine in which uh, steps of these processes we have to focus in order to decrease the environmental impact of the of the process. This is a tool that we usually would use in in the global analysis of the of the process. Also, we use, as I said before, another tools as the uh, metabolic engineering or the uh, different molecular techniques in order to improve to to analyze the these processes. In this case, we are using some uh, metabolic models and metabolic engineering. Here we have the, the models and we are using different changes in, in the microorganisms in order to improve the capacity of these microorganisms for biogas valorization, for example, to produce ectoin or to produce another valuable product, as uh, I said uh, before. In the next uh, slide, these are the molecular, bio, uh, molecular microbial, microbial ecology and molecular techniques different equipment that we use to analyze the, the process. And also, as I say, we are starting with the metabolic engineering in which we modify the microorganisms in order to obtain the product that we are looking for, the specific product that we are looking for. Uh, another important uh, branch of this of the institute is everything related with process control and supervision. Uh, in this case, we try to, to offer uh, solutions to model uh, processes and to improve control from different uh, perspectives. Uh, and in, in this case, we make some process modeling and simulation of the process in order to determine the better operational conditions without the, the need of uh, research. After that, we will have to to check, to check <laughs> yes, the, the viability. And uh, another uh, um, tool that we use is everything related with uh, analytical chemistry, the analytical methods, mainly oriented at this moment to, determ the, to determine the emerging pollutants that they are at very, very low concentration in wastewater and we need a very uh, uh, powerful uh, analytical techniques to, to determine, mainly because they are also in a complex matrix, in wastewater or waste that are complex uh, matter. And uh, we are also involved in the determination of heavy metals in some, uh, and the influence of these heavy metals in uh, microalgae. And other uh, tool that we are using is the use of uh, porous material, mainly membranes that we are using in different applications in separation systems as the membrane bioreactors, the use of uh, porous uh, surface in order to design this kind of materials to uh, obtain the better uh, properties uh, in order to apply in, in our processes. I think the, that the membranes, uh, the application of membranes, is uh, has a, a very a very high uh, options in the in the near future to combine with the environmental processes in order to improve the, the quality of these processes. 
And also, as in, uh, we, we are working at the university, and one of our uh, main uh, actions is related with the training. Then we are involved in the not only at the training at bachelor level, but also at the master. The members, the, the professors of our uh, institute collaborate in, well, we are in charge of uh, the master in environmental engineering and we collaborate in another three masters in chemical engineering, advanced techniques in chemistry and master in, in physics. And we also uh, collaborate in three PhD programs, one of them in chemical and environmental engineering and a pro PhD program in chemistry and in, in physics. And I, yes, of this, uh, this activity gave uh, to some results, for example, in the 1919, before the, the COVID uh, uh, wait. We published uh, 46 uh, research articles and almost 70 communications to Congresses. The communications to Congresses has uh, dramatically decreased uh, during the, the last year. Here is one. And these are our uh, web page of the Institute, uh, www.iisp.uva.is. And I don't know if there is Okay, we have something about EduMB. Yes. But it's not moving now. I want to do that. Okay, now it's everything. <laughs> okay. So, um, ah, I will present. Okay. So, uh, yeah, you can introduce this part. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, we are in charge of the World Package 4 of the EduMB project. And we are uh, the technical partner because we work in the in our experience in environmental engineering and environmental management. So about this idea, we are in charge of the curriculum content planning and teacher training in the EduMB project. Uh, for this, uh, in the project, uh, we were uh, organized three workshops uh, in all the workshops, we were working with the teacher, with the contents of the, of the project, with the content of the course, preparing material and doing class to the teachers uh, with lectures, forums, doing programs, analyzing process diagram and doing seminars, visiting the laboratories and uh, visiting some fields, uh, some plants working in wastewater treatment or in solid waste treatment, etc. And also, uh, we were working in the content of the course that we prepared in the project. So we are the advisors of the content of this course. Uh, the project is uh, addressed to sustainable waste management and is divide, divided in age learning modules with 20 cores to obtain 60 ECTs, uh, the equivalent of the uh, full course load. And what well, is now ready to work and uh, we are finishing all the implementation of the course. Uh, the course contain these models and we are in charge of the contents. We were in charge because the contents are finished and all the models are now ready. And what, uh, our contribution for this conference was about methodology, uh, learning uh, or teaching methodology. And we were sharing with you our experience in a screencast. Uh, we started to prepare a, a screencast in 2018. Uh, we are preparing uh, videos mainly with the theoretical content of our lectures in order to um, use our presencial class 
to do practical question and practical problem and to solve a question of the students and to do project-based learning. So we prepare a teaching by a screencast of our contents in order to use the time to interact with the students. It's not so good at this moment because it just it was uh, we were thinking to interact more deeply with the students in the class, not to go there to talk about theory, just go there to work with them. Uh, the COVID time is difficult for that because we can't interact as we want, but we have this material that was very useful last year for the online teaching. And we are using that again, this course, in order to use all the available time to work together with the students. So this is our presentation, please. Much. You want some... <laughs> Thank you very much, Silvia. Yeah. Pedro, uh, about your very uh, interesting yeah, presentation. And uh, I would like to ask you about the uh, what methodology uh, do you use during your lectures? And you. Uh, uh, okay. Is asking us or not? Or is just. Okay. Uh, uh, can, uh, Sylvia, can you uh, switch? Uh, remove. Ah, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. And it depends on the level. Uh, usually, for the degree, with the most um, traditional lecturer, we use the screencast as assistance for the students. But uh, is more traditional. We have some theoretical lecture. And we work uh, a lot with problems, with uh, problems-based learning. And in depending on the course, for example, I have teach a third course of degree. And at this course, we do also um, project-based learning. We work all the subjects together to propose an only project. And we work in different aspects of this project. We are teaching in chemical engineering and we propose a process, a chemical processes. And some teachers are designing the hydraulic of the systems, other teachers are designing the thermal exchange, other the separation processes, other the reaction processes. And finally, the student presents a global uh, process with all the components of the different subjects of the course. But at the master level, I use, we use principally a, a more active learning and we prepare the theoretical content for them. They study along the theoretical uh, contents. And after that, in the class, they ask a question. We do a brief uh, abstract of this theoretical contents and we work. We work in the discussion of uh, of manuscripts, papers, scientific papers, or we discuss uh, theoretical questions, or we do uh, problems uh, at class with them. Thank you, uh, Syria. Uh, and also, I have uh, one of the question uh, according to the um, uh, impact of you uh, doing the project, because uh, this is very important to have the impact. And uh, I um, uh, am about the, some of the uh, double degree program, programs. Uh, do you have the, some uh, plan to develop uh, this kind of the um, programs with Kazakhstan universities? Because this would be very great impact uh, of the Edu in V project on the international <laughs> level. Mm. Uh, uh, yes, uh, related to the double degrees, uh, as uh, I, I saw in the in, in the presentation, we have 
our idea is to try to improve these uh, disagreements. And at this moment, the, the university is also uh, involved or is very, very interested in this kind of, uh, of actions. Uh, we are, uh, or we can uh, try to make a double degree with uh, any uh, university in which we can uh, combine these uh, these degrees because sometimes one, one of the problems is that the objectives of the, our degree and the objectives of the other degrees they are not compatible it's not possible to to combine a both of uh, of them but uh, our uh, idea is to try to to improve the or to increase or not to improve to, to increase the number of these uh, agreements, these double degree agreements, we consider that they, they are in, interesting for our students and they are interested also for for foreign foreign students. But uh, we have also there are also other options in, in order to to improve the the relationship between the the universities or between the research uh, group. Uh, it's not sometimes it's not necessary to have a, a double degree agreement but we can have a, an agreement in to exchange students because sometimes it's not possible because sometimes there are some re restrictions and, and it's not possible to arrange a double degree because uh, each university needs to, to complete some parts and it's not so easy, but it's easiest to make a, an exchange agreement and with the Erasmus Cup Plus or this kind of uh, programs is not so difficult to to look for some uh, budget or some support to for the mobility and that some sometimes that is a uh, is easier and also it's easier to to find mobility for for research programs when it's uh, when the universities have some uh, research uh, research lines that are similar then to to look for some of these uh, uh, support is not so, sometimes you know, so, so difficult. Thank you very much. Okay. I want to say that at this moment, we have a learning agreement with your university, with our soft university, in order to exchange students and to have a program as the Erasmus Plus K 107, that is now open. And at this time, we have many PhD to tell with you so at this time we have uh, an important uh, relation with the our South university thank you very much for your invitation but of course, can mm -hmm. i ask uh, one question uh, good day dear professors um, i have a question so you talk about um, theoretical part and what about practical part uh, what do you usually do when uh, you want uh, to show and you want to control how your students use uh, this or that equipment uh, in online mode okay are you talking about the lab yes yes, yes. About we have lab. not a um, online lab usually mm. only for Process simulation and control, mm -hmm. but a uh, practical lab are face to face always. Mm -hmm. Our practical labs are, in fact, uh, even when was the the worst crisis, we had a uh, small groups in the lab working in the lab. Only we have practical class about uh, software of simulation control and that, but not about lab. We, when, when I'm talking about practical, I'm talking about uh, problems, projects, but not lab. Okay. Lab is always face to face. Okay, thank you for the question, for the answer. Uh, precisely, the, uh, the, the labs uh, is one of the problems of the online uh, teaching because uh, if you are preparing a, a degree, with some uh, practical classes, if you need the lab, then the students have uh, they have to go to the lab. They have to move from where they are 
the home or the city they, where they are studying, they have to move to the to the university or to the research lab or to the labs in order to to make these uh, practical labs. And that's uh, there is no more options. You you can change sometimes to from what they call uh, dry practice in, instead of uh, lab. In, in which you use some simulation or some some of this system, and, uh, but in this case, the, perhaps the control is not so so easy, and, and is is not the same. Usually, you have to to move. Okay, thank you. It is understandable. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, dear professors uh, Garcia and dear professor Bolada and maybe do you have any questions dear auditorium do you have any questions to professors from the Valladolid University please you can give questions uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry uh, if I can if I may so I'd like as a question uh, it's not the uh, I think not the the complicated one it's just the the practical question. So, how do you think, dear professors, uh, which uh, platforms is that the more suitable and more uh, useful to conduct uh, practical lessons? Because for lecture, it's um, easy. Uh, uh, almost all the uh, online platforms, but it's uh, difficult uh, for practical lessons. So, which platforms, which tools are more adapted, more suitable for practical lessons. Thank you so much. <laughs> we use more of the time uh, WebEx. Is the, is the the most used because it's the the platform that we use for for meeting. Is the official platform of our university. It's, but sorry, use... Silvia, one, one question, one, one point. Uh, uh, when we are teaching, we use the official uh, platforms of, uh, of the university. Mm -hmm. We cannot use uh, another platform that is not uh, official. Is, uh, we cannot download uh, whatever platform we have to use. Uh, and at this moment, we can use, I don't know, COVID has Webex, Teams. Life size. Thing. Size and uh, Blackboard, no? Something yes. Like that. I think that no more than that. And I'm sorry. You can... And we use a lot uh, the the Moodle platform to communicate with the students. We use the campus of Moodle to provide uh, documents, to do tasks, and to manage all the content with the students. We use Moodle platform, and usually Webex. For the for the online class, but I think that it depends a, a lot on on the teachers. That uh, for some teachers they prefer uh, we use Webex because we prefer Webex, perhaps because we started to work with the Webex when the pandemic. But other teachers they use uh, a lot Teams, for example, in Spain, in the, at least in our region, the secondary school they use uh, Teams. And other uh, teachers, they prefer uh, to use Moodle, the, I think it's the Blackboard, I think the name is Blackboard, some, Blackboard Collaborative, something like that, in Moodle, because with the Blackboard Collaborative, you have the, I, I don't know how to say, perhaps the students control it. You know who is uh, in the in the platform. You know the name exactly, and not, not the nickname as uh, sometimes occurs in WebEx or, uh, or other platforms. But I think it depends a lot on the on the teachers, on the professors, and what are you looking uh, with the with the platform. Thank you very much, uh, and I would like to say about uh, one of the our colleagues. Uh, colleagues from the Ural Federal University, uh, Sergei Nikolaevich Palbitsin. Sergei Nikolaevich Palbitsin is uh, one of the well-known uh, professor scientists uh, from the um, Ural uh, from Russia, and he's a doctor of economical sciences 
uh, and he uh, is special specialist in the field of the digital innovations. Uh, Sergey Nikolaevich, we would like to ask about the, your field, your expertise, um, and also about the pedagogical technologies that you use uh, during your lectures uh, in the condition of the online learning, and also about the, how the uh, EDUNV projects uh, impact on your university. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, should I speak English or Russian or Ruski? Uh, I think uh, we prefer the English because. Uh, oh, wonderful. Uh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, first of all, I would like uh, to continue the discussion uh, concerning uh, the best platform. In our university, we tried different platforms. Uh, I think we tried all platform uh, during the last year, uh, but I stay uh, and right now I prefer to work uh, with uh, just a second. I will find where it is. No. No, I cannot find where it is. Un uh, unfortunately, well, I will try. Ah, here it is. Okay, uh, do you see uh, my screen? Yes, we can see. Mm -hmm. So uh, I prefer to to work with uh, Microsoft Teams, and uh, why it's uh, quite easy to understand because uh, it's uh, really. And uh, Pedro already said that uh, secondary schools uh, are good uh, in uh, using Microsoft Teams because it's easy to organize. Like uh, for example. Uh, well, I have international students. Uh, I have uh, students who were not able uh, to come uh, to Russia uh, for this uh, term, for this uh, educational year. So they stay in their native countries, uh, like in China, like in uh, Tunisia, like uh, in Mexico, uh, but there able uh, to contact us, uh, to continue to work with us. And why I love, uh, I, I would better say love, not like uh, Microsoft Teams, uh, because I can use assignments here, because I can assign uh, tasks, problems uh, to all of my students, and I'm able uh, to, to check what they have done. So I make assignments, uh, I uh, give them a uh, problem to be solved. Uh, they submit me assignment. They submit their assignments. I can check everything, I can write them. It takes some time uh, because uh, Microsoft Teams uh, requires a lot of my memory. No, it takes too much time. Uh, the question is uh, that. Some problems with the connection. And uh, mm -hmm. I will say it again. Yes, you can continue because you had the, some uh -huh, problems with the connection. Mm -hmm. Do you hear me? Do you see me? You can see. Ah, okay, wonderful. Uh, because uh, the problem with my, uh, the only problem with Microsoft Teams uh, is uh, that it requires a lot of memory and uh, high demand, uh, high requirements uh, for computational abilities of your computer. Uh, uh, just a computer uh, will not work with Microsoft Teams. When, uh, when you try to work in Zoom and in Teams uh, simultaneously, it causes a lot of problems. I tried uh, to, uh, to stop sharing, I tried uh, to quit uh, Microsoft Teams, 
and it takes a lot of time uh, to do that. Dear Professor, uh, uh, do, you, uh, do you hear me? Hello? Uh, yes, we can hear you. You can continue. Dear Professor, Dear Professor, uh, do you have some problems with the connection? Dear Auditorium. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I'm here. I'm back. Do you uh, see me? Yes, we can see and we can hear you. Mm -hmm. You can continue. Uh, okay, wonderful. No, but uh, that is something terrible. You see, uh, when we started to work online, we found out that uh, the main problem is uh, hardest requirements uh, on computers. But uh, my point is uh, that uh, to me, Microsoft Teams is uh, the most convenient way uh, to organize uh, educational process online as if it is online. Uh, because uh, I keep uh, control, uh, I keep students under control. Because uh, the, the worst thing uh, with the students, you know, that it's uh, to lose control. And uh, Tampere University organized International Week uh, for uh, partners uh, a week ago. Well, you are invited, but I, I uh, didn't see you there. Right, but I got. Uh -huh. uh, thank you very much, uh, dear Professor Palbitsen, because uh, we also, our university also choose the Microsoft Teams for the... Oh, okay, wonderful. Uh, uh -huh, because this is good platform and I know uh, experience of some of the school and some of the uh, other uh, universities also uh, choose this Microsoft Teams because this is very convenient uh, to control and to to do some conferences, etc. And so mm -hmm. uh, I would like to ask the auditorium, maybe do you have the, some uh, any questions to uh, professors? You can uh, give questions to uh, Professor Silvia Bolada or Pedro Garcia and also from the uh, Professor Sergei yes. Polbitsen. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Can I ask the question? Yes. Um, uh, good day, professors. I was very excited to know that today you have these lectures and uh, it, was, it was very interesting. Your presentations was really very excited. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I have one question, so I just wanted to know your opinion. Uh, what do you think, how can biotechnology influence on our uh, waste recycling in our case? Uh, maybe you can give our, uh, us some uh, I don't know some steps or how to how can we improve it? Okay, I think this is the question uh, to Silvia or Pedro, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, about I, I think yes. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> think, I think you, you are asking about the use of biotechnologies in order to improve the waste and waste uh, treatment and my, my opinion is that uh, at this moment uh, the the future is uh, based on biotechnologies uh, we, we can combine of course with the other uh, physical or for chemical uh, or, or even uh, te uh, thermal thermal technologies but i think that at this moment the 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 future uh, will be based on, on microorganisms, on bio, biotechnologies. I think that they have a very a, a lot of options in order to to treat the wastewater, in order to obtain mainly 
some valuable products from from waste and from wastewater and uh, we usually operate uh, at the uh, mild conditions not uh, so high temperatures or pressure and uh, we usually don't generate so high quantity of uh, waste and that the, the future will be based on on, on, on biotechnology and as you can see is uh, the, the the improvement in the knowledge about the uh, biotechnology processes is uh, is increasing a lot in, in the last years, and I think that there will be a is taking uh, take, taking part of a revolution in this kind of uh, of systems. That's my my opinion. Thank you very Thank much. much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for all uh, participants. Unfortunately, we have the, some limitation of the time, and I would oh. like to uh, say thank you very much uh, to Professor Silvia Bolada, to Professor uh, Pedro Garcia and Professor uh, Sergei Polbitsin, because you share with us your experience and also you give your time, because I know you have the holidays in uh, your countries, and uh, I would like to say that we very uh, thankful for your time because today is hard, but you are at work. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> you are, you are you welcome. Uh -huh. You are welcome. We like our, our work, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you very much for all uh, participants uh, that you uh, participate and actively participate in our session. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, dear L, and we will begin our session now, okay? Uh -huh, because we have only 40 minutes. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, good day, dear colleagues. Um, we are very glad to invite you uh, for the participation in the discussion organized by the uh, within the framework of the International and Practical Conference Hours of Reading 19, uh, 30 years of the independence of the Kazakhstan. Uh, that is the scientific and information uh, platform for the Central Asian Nobel Fest Life, uh, which provides opportunities for the scientists uh, to take part in the online discussions. Now, uh, in the COVID-19 situation, we have the same problem in the whole world uh, in the, uh, and we have the online education now. And so uh, today we uh, organized the discussion about the experience of Edu in V project because Edu in V project enhancing competences uh, of the sustainable waste management uh, in Russian and Kazakhstan universities of the Erasmus uh, Plus program is aimed for the uh, development of the online uh, education and the, for the development of the online courses. So uh, I would like to uh, introduce uh, our colleagues from the partner universities, uh, from the Tampere University of the Applied Sciences uh, coordinator, uh, Ella Calio, and uh, uh, from the uh, Ural Federal University, uh, named after first president of Russia, Boris Yeltsin, uh, Professor Sergei Nikolaevich Polbitsin, and from the Al Farabi uh, Kazakh National University, um, Janar Shortambaeva, and from the um, <coughs> Shokan Walihanov, Kokshita University, uh, Aigul Saparbekovna uh, Kurmanbaeva, and uh, also uh, head of the uh, 
Biotechnology Department, uh, Muhtar Aouzev, Sous Kazakhstan University, uh, Saparbekova Almira Amangildzivna, and uh, I invite to all the participants to uh, for the uh, this session. Please, uh, my question to the Ella Kalio. Uh, dear Ella, uh, could you tell us uh, a little bit about the Eduin V projects and the, about the result that you have uh, during the project implementation? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thank you. And uh, uh, can I share some slides also? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, Just a moment, I will share my screen. Mm. Okay, so um, we have had this um, three years, um, uh, this EduNV project now lasting three years or a bit more than three years and we have four years in total to go on so our last spring of the uh, project is going on and, and I promised to um, share a bit about the ideas of uh, impacts of our project and, and the results of our projects um, and uh, as Botakos introduced me uh, I'm Ella Kallio from Tampere University of Applied Sciences, and uh, I'm uh, the project coordinator in EduEnvi. Um, so I think now in the beginning uh, or in the in the end part of the project is very important to start thinking about uh, what we have been reaching uh, during EduEnvi. And many times evaluating the impacts of, of any project uh, is concretely uh, just analyzing the results of the project and measuring how well the objectives of the project have uh, been um, achieved. And, and this is what we have also done in EduNV. But I would like to emphasize that also uh, it is very important uh, um, not only to address the results achieved so far, but also to learn from the process and to analyze the status of the development. So to also to analyze, are we going in the direction and are we doing the development um, efficiently enough? So, so are the results um, taking us to the right place? And, uh, also, I would like to point out here in the beginning that it's it's important to have the different or clarify the difference between outputs, outcomes, and impact. But in in Eduen, we we have been uh, analyzing what we have been achieving uh, with um, with Potakos uh, Motalieva and Sanar Sortnam Bayeva and Aikul uh, Kurman Bayeva. And we have been using this kind of uh, input, output, outcome, impact chain for this. This is a, a practical to, tool uh, for um, clarifying uh, the results and, and the outputs and the impacts of our project. So we see this kind of chain can be used uh, well when we want to act for the future and uh, we want to um, make our work um, uh, future oriented for project work so here in the left in the right hand side we we see the vision um, and it is very important that in, in every um, project we make this kind of reflection around the impacts and, and this way we contribute for the for the future de level, development also. So for example, if um, if we see here in the first steps some inputs, uh, this is something that we already saw in the uh, project planning stage. What 
what kind of resources we need to achieve the achieve the goals. So we have uh, planned our project project consortium so that every pro project partner has a role in in this project. So we have a, a group of European partners that have our own, um, how would I say, expertise that we bring into the project. Our Spanish partners from University of Valladolid, they are experts on, um, on non-sustainable waste management or, or circular economic issues. Uh, then our partners from Denmark, they are they are um, experts on uh, integrating university and business life or working life uh, cooperation together. And then uh, us in, from, from Finland, we are expertise on online uh, pedagogy. And then we have uh, partners from Russia and from Kazakhstan who all, also all have um, a part of the project. Uh, and role in this project. So, for example, in our Kazakh partners, uh, South Kazakhstan State University, uh, they are responsible on disseminating and uh, the the project results and making sure that uh, uh, these kind of um, um, that we take as much as uh, possible. Um, out from the project and, and, and realize it in a real life uh, situations. And then Al Farabi University is responsive, was responsible of the, of the piloting stage of the project. And in our Russian uh, universities, uh, the uh, ITMO University from St. Petersburg is responsible of the overall curriculum development and um, Ural Federal University is responsible of the, of the uh, quality uh, work in this project. So we have uh, planned this project so that all of our project partners want, um, uh, can, can join and can have um, their, put their own expertise so that we could uh, achieve the project um, aims as well as possible. And I, I want to emphasize that we are really, we have really been doing this project together in, in, in a uh, great co cooperation. So then if we go to the next step, outputs and activities, uh, um, there, how, how the resources are used to achieve the set aims, what actions, what outputs. It's obvious that, for example, outputs we have had concrete outputs. We have had these eight uh, online learning models around uh, different um, perspectives of, of sustainable waste management and, and all in all 60 ECTs uh, and 20 uh, online courses. So our partners in Russia and Kazakhstan, they have uh, developed these online courses in cooperation. Um, and also, for example, I could see all, um, that outputs and activities uh, are, for example, uh, those uh, teacher training sessions that we have organized during, during the pro project. Then if we move uh, one step um, more, we see outcomes, outcomes aimed by, by the actions, concrete, qualitatively and quantitatively measurable changes. So outcomes here, we see that the outcomes uh, were already determined in the planning stage of the project. Uh, uh, and for example, this one outcome is uh, building capacity of the, of the academic staff in sustainable waste management and in online education. Uh, we have had uh, some kind of um, Mm, uh, how we have analyzed how well we have reached this, these outcomes. Uh, we organized um, interviews for the, for the uh, partners in, in Russia and Kazakhstan. I will tell about a bit more if we, if we just have time about those results more. And then 
the last step is impact, impact, uh, social, societal impact for, for example, change in the well being nature or structures in this um, step. Here we, we see that uh, um, one of the impacts are increased understanding and, and readiness to develop sustainable waste management and circular economy in, in our partner countries. Anyway, all of the things that we planned in the beginning, uh, we have been, um, uh, we have had in our minds in order to achieve these uh, aims of the project and, and go towards the vision of, of our partner universities and our partner countries. Um, more concretely, I could uh, still um, say how the impacts are observed in three sectors in these kind of projects. Uh, so uh, we have impacts in partner countries, what I already explained here before. Then we have uh, impacts in program countries. So for example, uh, countries uh, like in Edu Envy, uh, Spain, uh, Denmark and, and Finland. And then we have impacts in all the project partners at, at institutional level. So for example, how we will continue our cooperation and how we have uh, been making our organizations more international during this. Uh, but uh, we, um, I think, uh, our what one point that I want to raise here is that we talk a lot about impacts um, in our partner countries, so in Russia and Kazakhstan. But we have been also seeing some impacts in 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 the European countries as well. So so for when I, when I have been discussing the teachers had to, that have been. Um, involving in this project uh, in, in Spain, Denmark and Finland, we all have seen that uh, surely these kind of projects have a um, great impact in, in our universities as well. Uh, those are really shortly now. Uh, we have, um, I have still some uh, issues really related to the impacts uh, or, or the, the interviews that we did uh, last year in the project, but maybe I think I stop sharing now and uh, we can maybe uh, go to these uh, questions later on if there is more. Thank you very much, Ella. Thank you very much for a very interesting presentation about our uh, EDUNV project's results. And uh, we are very glad that uh, our project uh, achieved the, and have the uh, great impact in the three sectors. This is very important. And uh, I would like to ask uh, from a uh, participant also, uh, because uh, they developed uh, online courses uh, during implementation of the projects. And uh, my questions to uh, other participants also, uh, for example, what the teaching methodologies uh, do you use uh, during the online uh, courses development? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> it was best uh, suited to learning tools and uh, learning uh, technology. For each learning purpose, for example, for collaborative knowledge building, for brainstorming, feedback uh, collection, and knowledge testing. For example, it was Canva, Prezi, uh, different Google uh, instruments, and uh, Socrative, Kahoot, etc. Thank you very much, Sarbekovna. Uh, and my question to uh, also about the preparation of in the field of the sustainable management. You know, the EDU uh, project involves uh, the specialists from the enterprises. Uh, can you give the, some information about this? Mm. Okay. 
uh, the number of trained in the course teaching staff, students, and uh, company uh, authority staff, it was summary 134. But now uh, training courses uh, continued and uh, maybe its uh, number will increase. Thank you very much. Uh, and yes, also number uh, only for uh, Kazakhstan. Ah, uh, okay. Thank you. And also, I would like to ask uh, about the impact of the UDNV project for the, for example, uh, development of the some of the courses for the um, qualification increasing. Uh, do you have the sum of the courses? It's question for me. Uh -huh, this is question for you. In Kazakhstan, we're increasing uh, four, uh, four different courses. And um, it's uh, course uh, have two uh, uh, most important idea. The first innovative aspect, this project is a well-prepared program for capacity building of the academic staff of a partner country. Uh, universities in the area of waste management. This project shifts the focus on sustainable solid waste management, which is one of the most actual problems, how you know. And second uh, innovative, uh, innovational aspect uh, of our project, it is introduction of your learning tool, uh, your learning pedagogy in uh, our country. And uh, I have questions to uh, Janar Kajanovna because Janar Kajan is the uh, most important uh, person for the uh, piloting process. He, she was responsible for the piloting. And my question about the what the uh, update, no, how the project EDUNV impacted for the development and, and the updating of the educational program within the project, and the, what the number and name of these uh, programs? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, Butagos, for question. Um, last week, the Office of Erasmus in Kazakhstan uh, requested data uh, on the impact of uh, our project, uh, which I can uh, now present to you, uh, but. Uh, uh, this document is Word format. Uh, it's possible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this table um, shows uh, uh, how much uh, innovation uh, educational program. Uh, it is, uh, this program is uh, uh, for master students and. Uh, uh, upgraded, updated programs uh, for our universities in Kazakhstan, Kokshitao State University, uh, Al Farabi Kazakh University, and uh, South Kazakhstan University. Uh, total uh, 13 educational programs, um, uh, new disciplines uh, developed uh, within a framework of our project uh, 26. 26. Tak, um, and uh, these disciplines um, were concluded uh, uh, in our educational programs. Um, tak, uh, number of students uh, who is um, learned on our educational programs, uh, total number 192. Um, in the uh, framework of our project, um, our uh, teachers uh, learned uh, English course uh, training, training uh, in uh, waste management. Um, in waste management. Uh, um, and we have um, agreements uh, with uh, our partners universities and uh, our um, enterprises in Kazakhstan. Uh, academic, academic mobility of our students, um, uh, total number 124. Uh, and uh, um, 
uh, we have uh, today uh, the round table uh, and I will prepare documents for uh, shows in uh, our round table um, these achievements of our university of our department of technical physics and thermal physics uh, i can show our presentation um, our doctoral students sultan Bergaliva, uh, uh, and uh, our university and university of cadiz uh, we will um, uh, <clears throat> uh, dissertation work uh, recycled plastic materials for additive manufacturing, quality insurance, and a life cycle, cycle assessment. Um, and our um, our uh, student of uh, doctoral study, uh, Ruslan Baimuldin, uh, last year um, did uh, dissertational work uh, for title Plasma Gasification of Municipal Solid Waste. And uh, we have uh, partners, uh, Pakiza Tsaila Obekova, Recycle Berge Organization. Uh, it is ecological organization. Uh, non-commercial organization and uh, caviar uh, uh, organization company uh, where our students uh, undergo practical uh, internship. Um, our students, our uh, master students um, are eco ambassadors now. Uh, and um, we have uh, partnership with uh, ECOGER, uh, Kazakh associations of regional ecological initiatives. And uh, we have um, the close partnership with Rocket Plastic Company, Daniel Bakimov. Uh, there are our students uh, undergo partnership, uh, uh, tak undergo practical internship and uh, complete graduation thesis and all for my <laughs> report for your question what i was thank you very much janarka janana because uh, very great work very great work with the specialists, with the enterprises. And I think uh, all of the courses uh, will be very, uh, give the very good feedback who want to have the um, uh, for the waste management. And I know that uh, specialist uh, staff of the project uh, had the um, very good opportunity to have the some uh, training in the European countries uh, in the workshops for the uh, teaching competency and uh, what about the other teaching staff who are not uh, staff of no team members you uh, share your for example in your year learning in the uh, tools uh, instruments for the uh, online courses for other uh, uh, in the uh, teaching staff in your university in the uh, your university please uh, do you have the some of the maybe uh, um, workshops and the seminars for the uh, other teaching staff Question for me. Uh, uh, I do. Uh, hmm? Okay. <laughs> we provide uh, different webinars, seminars for, uh, for our teachers and students uh, about the learning materials, about uh, of uh, uh, learning process in um, our time uh, there is um, COVID-19 
uh, and uh, um, our work now um, is in online regime uh, and our teachers I hope uh, that our teachers uh, can uh, teach in uh, online regime uh, very well and our students uh, will <laughs> okay the good specialists uh, on our department know that uh, you organized a lot of the webinars uh, i mean the all of the um, kazakhstan partner countries and the uh, uh, universities and also the Russian universities and uh, for example uh, uh, Kaznu and um, Kokshetau State University and uh, South Kazakhstan uh, University organized uh, a, um, a few webinars during uh, approximately 283 uh, teachers uh, have the possibility had the possibility uh, to uh, know about the IDUNV and uh, to have the some knowledge for the uh, e learning tools and uh, using of the e learning tools for their um, uh, online education for the, their online lectures and so uh, my uh, next question to the our colleagues from the um, Ural Federal University uh, Sergei Nikolaevich Palbitsin and I would like to about advanced pedagogical uh, technologies do you use now in the condition of the online learning please yeah sure uh, thank you so much uh, for your invitation uh, and I would like uh, to say about uh, Russian saying, Dorga Yichka ka Christovu Tnyu. In English, that means uh, that uh, uh, any egg is good uh, for Easter, right? Because right now we have Easter, we had Easter, uh, and uh, we, we have uh, to, uh, to give uh, eggs uh, to each other. But uh, why do I use uh, this saying? Uh, just because uh, when we started our project, uh, the first meeting was dedicated uh, to online pedagogical uh, technologies. And I recall uh, the presentation by Evelyn, uh, who described to us uh, Zoom, uh, who described uh, to us uh, other uh, technologies. When we came back uh, to our university and when we started, the, uh, don't you remember that uh, that was uh, the year, the beginning of the 1918, am I right? Yes, that was the beginning of 1918. Uh, we started uh, to describe to our colleagues uh, about, talk, uh, describe the Zoom uh, and uh, they, were not, uh, they were, were not enthusiastic. They said we do not need it. Uh, because we need uh, to use traditional methods. But uh, right now, uh, when we introduced Zoom, we explained to our, uh, to, uh, to our colleagues uh, what does it mean. And right now, everybody is using it. That's why I would like to say that uh, our project uh, from the beginning was very useful uh, to our university uh, because uh, we were introduced new, te new technologies and we are really good uh, in uh, apply, implying these uh, technologies in our educational pro uh, process. So that's about uh, new technologies. And uh, talking about uh, other uh, uh, technologies, I would like to say that uh, right now we have uh, a set of technologies and we had an opportunity to try, I mean, not only our university, but uh, any, uh, all universities in the world. Uh, we tried these uh, technologies. Uh, I have spoken uh, with uh, my friends from Tampere during international days. Uh, we have discussed it uh, with uh, your university, with uh, uh, my colleagues from your university, we use uh, the same platforms, uh, but right now it's time for us uh, to understand uh, how can we use uh, these platforms uh, for better and uh, to develop our uh, new approach uh, to the teaching. Thank you, Sergei Nikolaevich. Uh, Sergei Nikolaevich, um, I would like to ask you about the, uh, what the advantage and disadvantage uh, do you see in the online education over the traditional? 
Well, uh, for, uh, again, uh, I will. Uh, I will tell you uh, not only my experience, uh, but uh, the, the common point of view uh, from the discussion uh, with my colleagues uh, during the international days in temporary. In all countries in the world, uh, we have the same problem. Yes, it is uh, convenient uh, to, uh, to teach online uh, because I can keep all assignments in one place. Uh, I can check. Uh, all assignments, I can uh, see the progress of education, but we lose face-to-face uh, -face, uh, conversation. We, we do not see students. Uh, we, uh, we do not understand. Do, do they understand us or not? And that's the main problem, right? So from one side, it is uh, convenient. It's the next step uh, in, uh, in pedagogical uh, technologies. From other side, we can lose something very important. And uh, let me remind you that uh, something like about five years ago, everybody were talking about uh, online education, uh, that is the future, that is the future. Right now, everybody said that it's a room for both uh, types of education, traditional uh, in classrooms uh, and uh, online education. Thank you very much, Sergei Nikolaevich, and I agree with you also because, uh, yes, online education and online learning is convenient from uh, some point of view, but from the other point, for example, for the research work and the, for the laboratory work, this is not the um, good because we need to do, for example, research work by, uh, by hands and uh, uh, to use the face-to-face -face education. Okay, thank you very By much. By sharing minds. Yes, right? uh -huh. <laughs> yes, <laughs> of course. And my... Uh, uh, I, I can add uh, uh -huh. one sentence. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that online learning is good mm -hmm. that uh, number of uh, students unlimited. For example, today our conference is uh, mm -hmm. unlimited numbers, participants. It is very good for... Uh, for dissemination, yes. Thank you very much. And uh, my last question uh, to Almira Mangildivna, because she is one of the responsible person uh, for the EduNV project. She is she chief of biotechnology department. And uh, I would like to ask, uh, could you give the, some information about the, how the EduNV project impacted for the department and the, for the university, for our university? Mm -hmm. For, for for our university, you mean? Because uh, Almira Mangildina is chief of the biotechnology department, and my question to her. Ah, Thank okay, you. okay. Uh -huh, okay. <laughs> okay, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, excuse me, uh, Botagos, can you repeat your question? My question, uh, could you give the, some information about the, how the EduNV project impacted for the department and the for university? Okay, thank you for your question, impact of our university and my department. Uh, in firstly, we prepare, uh, we prepare education program and you, uh, you, uh, you prepare two disciplines which connect with uh, waste utilization uh, and uh, we improve our English every time we participate in conference and different kind, kind of meeting and we involve uh, involved students, master students and uh, PhD students. So, and uh, in last year, uh, five students uh, prepare um, diploma work which connect with uh, this uh, program you do in the uh, project and uh, also we um, published two books which also uh, has information about you do in the Mira Mangildzivna uh, and uh... I would like to say uh, to all of you, uh, thank you. And uh, especially now, I, I would like to thanks 
to the also uh, to the associate partner universities. Uh, for example, today uh, I know that Galia Madibekova also uh, is responsible for the involving of the partner universities, associated partner universities. And I would like to uh, say. Uh, to all of the participants, to all of the partner universities, including the associate partners. Uh, thank you very much for the participation and uh, see you soon. Thank you for your time. And we have the, some limitation of the time and we will see on the next time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Dear colleagues, uh, I am very glad to see you again. And today we um, continue our session. Uh, this session, um, uh, <clears throat> we invite you, uh, IDUINV project partners, uh, partner university, to share your experience in the field of the inline, online education, in the methodologies, and we invite uh, our participants to participate in the discussions. And so we will begin uh, from the introduce uh, my colleagues from the uh, University of Applied Sciences uh, of Tampere, uh, Dr. Sisko Malinen, uh, and uh, Univers University of Applied Sciences of the Odense, uh, Denmark, uh, Dr. Ellen Haumeller and uh, Elizabeth uh, Agerbeck. Mm -hmm. So uh, we uh, can begin from the presentation of Dr. Sisko Malinen, uh, and she uh, share uh, of her experience, experience of the Tampere University uh, for the uh, online learning, learning and warnings from the uh, Finland education. So thank you. Thank you, Botagos. Uh, I'm very happy to be here, very honored and a bit nervous with, uh, with this presentation. Can you all hear me properly? Excellent. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, you can all see my slides, great. So these are um, uh, online learnings and warnings, uh, some do's and don'ts, uh, based basically on the Finnish experience, mainly my experience. <laughs> In Finland, we started online um, education in the 1990s, about 1995, I think I was first involved. Um, and I try to keep this short because I know we don't have much time and I want to leave some time for, for questions as well. So uh, I understand that the, the main topic of this conference is sort of uh, comparing the traditional and the contemporary uh, paradigms of education. And therefore I included a few slides uh, to show the development of um, the educational paradigms and how it also shows in online learning. These three pictures are taken from uh, this very good source, um, uh, a blog actually, educationfutures.com. And this first slide presents the traditional education paradigm where the teacher uh, has all the control. This is a very teacher-led. The teacher sort of possesses the knowledge and then tries to give it to the students who are passive recipients of this information. So they just passively sort of sit there, listen and, and uh, learn. Um, 
And then the idea is that they will be able to reproduce <coughs> what the teacher has sort of uh, taught them. The teacher is like the sage on the stage. I'm so sure you are familiar with this uh, expression. And this is based on the behaviorist paradigm of education and learning. And this, uh, if we look at the kind of online possibilities in this uh, kind of paradigm, at the time, the internet was uh, a source of information. So what you could find online or what you could do online was to, to find information, not much, much else. And this was called Education 1.0 but the education 2.0, which is already based on the constructivist learning theories, the learners are no more only passive recipients of information, but they become collaborators. So in this kind of uh, teaching and learning, the teacher's role changes from the sage on the stage to the guide on the side, and the teacher is sort of planning activities and facilitating students' work, students working together. And at that time, the internet already started to provide um, social networking tools like Twitter or Skype or wikis, uh, blogs, Google Docs, uh, tools that enabled students to work together even remotely. So they could be filling in the same mind map or the writing in the same document, uh, all from their own homes and uh, connecting through the internet at the same time or also asynchronically, like uh, everybody when it... <laughs> taking their own time, like for example, writing the, when they had the time, not necessarily had to be online exactly at the same time. And the uh, education 3.0, where we would like to now, um, is a bit more advanced from that uh, constructivist paradigm, um, moving towards social culturalism and the C Siemens has developed this area of connectivism, especially for online learners. So in this paradigm, learners not only collaborate online to, to build their common knowledge, but they become producers of content. They become, they find the information <laughs> I can I can hear some noise. Can you please turn off your microphones and try to leave some time afterwards for questions? Thank you. So uh, the learners become um, producers of content, and now we have all these possibilities. As you know, it's possible for the students to produce videos and share them via YouTube, for example. And the teacher's role uh, here, it says, becomes a, a resource guide, not uh, only a facilitator of learning, uh, but giving students ideas where they can find the uh, resources and, and supporting this kind of uh, very learner-centered uh, creation of knowledge. So this is where we would like to be now and now to, to the experiences. So the students have an opportunity to shine even online. Um, as you know, there are different kinds of uh, implementations of, of uh, teaching and learning. Uh, fully online courses, either facilitated or uh, self-directed, like MOOCs, where you, the students can you know, access them and, and learn without um, 
any facilitation, or there could be facilitation included, or blended learning, which means that the students sometimes meet face to face, but maybe mostly work online. And then of obviously the traditional face to face learning where the, where the internet and the computers are used uh, as tools. In my experience, blended learning courses maybe work best because um, in online learning, it's really important that when you start your, uh, the course, the students have a chance to, to socialize and to get to know each other and to, to, to build a safe learning environment where they feel like collaborating. So the best, best of my experiences have been with blended learning courses where the students meet face to face before the course begins. And then if possible, also during the course. And then they work in small groups online uh, in collaborative activities time, or uh, times. And the teacher's role could be also not just, you know, facilitating, giving feedback, answering questions, but also organizing live tutorials online um, where students can meet uh, in small groups. Students can also work in small groups without the teacher, but sometimes with the teacher in small groups to get the necessary support. Um, and this is important um, because, uh, as I said, in blended learning implementations, it's easier to start it so that there's enough kind of online uh, social online socialization is more difficult to do than face to face socialization as you know but if you need to start your online course without the possibility of meeting face to face then please pay special attention to to this informal beginning and introductions video introductions are very powerful you can use, for example, Flipgrid, Screencast-O-Matic, make your own with yourself and then ask students to make their own videos introducing themselves. And for example, Flipgrid has the kind of um, possibility for students to discuss via videos. They can post a, a comment video or a question video as a response to the video they have seen. So it also allows like asynchronic discussions orally. And form small groups or allow students to form their own small groups. You need to facilitate community building. It doesn't happen. If you just say form groups, it might not happen. Uh, introduce tools for school for your students that they can use for collaboration in use. When you are planning your online course, start your planning uh, on how students will learn. Let's try to think about how students will learn this instead of what I shall deliver them. Don't think about yourself first. What, my, what materials am I going to give them? But think about how will my students learn this and plan activities for your students more than materials. And give them choice. Give your student choice to make their own information searches because uh, this gives them a joy of discovery. It's much more exciting to find something than to be given something by the teacher. And so that they can focus on what they are most interested in. You can give selection of sources, for example, so that they can select from, from a list if it's too difficult for them to find them on their own totally. And also they might try to decide how they prefer to show their learning. Is it always an essay or maybe they could present a, a video or make a poster, whatever seems suitable. And 
Online, it's even easier to invite experts to attend your course and give an expert lecture uh, than to a face-to-face -face classroom. So don't forget this possibility. And always encourage connections outside the course so that students can make connections, not just within the course, between themselves, but with outside experts and maybe other students in other countries, in other courses. Don't forget your own presence online. You shouldn't leave your students there uh, working together without you uh, being present from time to time and so that they feel that you are, you are there with them. So have regular contact, maybe weekly, reminding them of the upcoming activities and so forth, giving feedback. More do's. Instructions are, are difficult. They, it's difficult to give clear instructions even face to face, but when you have to write them down for an online course, you have to be extra clear so that students will understand what they are expected to do. And when you're trying to be extra clear, you risk being very long. And again, if the instructions are very long, there's more risk for misunderstandings. So please pay extra attention to your instructions, how you give instructions to your students. And again, make sure they have the tools. And don't forget to give them time. When you start uh, planning your activities, think about how much an average student will need time to do this. And within these credits that they are going to gain, how much how much work can you give them uh, think, thinking about the time they have and the credits that they are gaining? And remember that online, everything is lower. It's lower for you because you need to write down all the instructions and so forth. It's lower for the students because they need to log in, they need to navigate. It takes time for them to agree on, agree on a small group meeting, where, when, what tools to use. Reading and writing takes time. And I refer to a Finnish study where um, a Finnish uh, professor explained that, for example, writing a hundred words takes one hour. So when you give them activities, for example, writing activities, give them enough time as well. Making a presentation could take eight hours. Preparing for a test, you should give them more, uh, think about the time. And very importantly, leave them time to think, reflect on their learning. Maybe uh, give them a kind of reflection task so that they can keep, for example, a learning journal or a portfolio where they can reflect on their learning. And if you schedule your course, make sure that your, the reflection time is visible there. And uh, even if we emphasize collaborative knowledge building, I think it's still very important that the students have individual reflection time and reflection activities and individual evidence of learning so that they, they come to these collaborative activities individually prepared so that they have something to share. And then in these collaborative activities, they share what they've learned and they learn more as a group. And when they come out of these collaborative activities as an individual, their learning has been enhanced. And this is the kind of individual evidence of learning that you can then try to, uh, try to see and make them show you after this uh, collaborative process, when they are supposed to know more than before. Some don'ts, and these are very sort of uh, blunt, and you shouldn't take them literally, but I, I try to be clear here. Don't leave your students alone and isolated, because it's so easy for students to feel alone and isolated if they are alone in their flat, and the only connection is through uh, the internet. So make special effort, efforts there. Don't transform your classroom teaching. Just 
putting it online. For example, giving a lecture in an auditorium uh, with a recording on and then sharing that recording. That's not online learning. If you make videos, they should be made especially for online learning. Like, uh, for example, that they are not longer than 15 minutes, for example, or that they are five minutes long. If you have a, a big topic, you can still divide it into smaller subtopics that you deal with in different videos, because it's easier for the students to watch a short video. And when they want to go back to something they didn't really understand, it's easy because it's in a short video and you, they don't have to rewind and try to find the right place in the long video. Don't give long li li live lectures online. This doesn't mean that you can't give any live lectures. You can, when it's, uh, it's important that students learn from your expertise and the live session has its own magic, but don't make a regular thing because like consider which of these videos could be watched at home before the live session where we could only discuss what they learn from the video and what questions they have. Don't pack your online course full of materials. Think about activities more than materials. Don't forget to enjoy teaching and facilitation. <laughs> if you enjoy it, your students will enjoy it. And the last slide, uh, this is a kind of motto we have in Finland, less teaching, more learning. And this refers to the teacher's job. When you step aside, you give up your control of everything. More learning happens. More students get more responsibility and, and, and choices. I think this, this is my last slide, but I have put here some good links uh, for online learning. This is Jilly Salmon's five states model of designing online learning step by step. How do you design, design an online course? And here is a collection of tools, online tools for learning, like categorized like which tools are for collaboration, which are for presentation and so forth. Okay, thank you for your attention. And now if there are any, there's any time for questions, up, I'd be happy to answer them. But we'll also give the floor to Ellen and Elizabeth <laughs> if it's the time. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Cisco. And I think uh, maybe, uh, do you have questions? I mean the auditorium, okay, to the Cisco, Malinin. May I ask a question? Of course, please. Uh, good day. Thank you for your presentation material. Uh, as a whole, we have uh, online learning for two years uh, from uh, like 2020 and for this year, this is the second. And uh, all uh, of your um, experience, I think for uh, lecture material, for presentation of lecture material. And sometimes I have uh, uh, problems with control, uh, uh, knowledge of students on practical lessons. And what can you say about it? How to control their knowledge and uh, evaluation of their knowledge? What about this? Evaluation online? Yes. Sometimes for me, it is very, um, I think the, uh, the, this is the problem for, uh, mm. uh, out, uh, for, um, как обратная связь, um, out feedback. Feedback. Yes. Uh -huh. feedback, feedback, feedback connection, yes. As presentation, I can show them more and to say mm. more, but mm. when I control, I have problem for feedback. Well, this is a big question and there's not a simple answer, but for feedback, for example, you could use peer feedback. Having peer feedback, giving them a clear criteria, what they should look for in the, for example, in the assignments, if they are writing a, a report, you can have them give peer feedback on each other's reports if you give them clear criteria, what to look for and what to comment on. So that will 
take some workload uh, out of you, your own shoulders. Uh, for finding evidence of le individual learning, there's always this problem that who, who is doing this? <laughs> if, oh, yes, this is yeah. the, the, hmm. the most if, you, if they are not under your eyes, if you can't see them perform, you, it's just mainly uh, based on trust. If you give them an essay to, to submit to, for you to be evaluated, you just have to trust that they've written it. You can test it for plagiarism uh, to see that they haven't copied any uh, other materials, but you can't really know if somebody else at home wrote it. This is a, there are systems for online exams. For example, in, in TAMC, we have a kind of online exam where they all need to be present at the same time. Teacher sees them when they are doing the test. But this is, a, I think, a, a different thing altogether. But this is a trust issue that you can't avoid if you are teaching online, I think. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Any questions? Yes, I have a question. Uh, good day for everyone. Uh, Mrs. Cisco, my question is similar to the question uh, of my colleague, but please, could you tell if you have any concerns as a representative of the education sphere uh, that the distance learning format uh, can significantly reduce the professional competencies of future graduates, especially of technical specialities. So if I understood you correctly, you, you are asking if uh, digital learning can uh, produce worse results in technical yes, learning. Yes, yes. Yeah. I know that online uh, format is now reality and we couldn't escape some types uh, of uh, online learning, but mm -hmm. We minimize some risks in online uh, learning, especially for technical specialities. Yes, uh, I don't have any solutions to you how to how to overcome technical challenges in in online learning, but um, but what I would say is that you we can be realistic about online learning. It's not a magic thing that will solve everything. It doesn't suit every subject as well. So it's not like the one thing that we should all be doing now. If there is a technical subject where there's a need for manual skills, for example, then obviously the best way to learn is manually face-to-face -face situations. But uh, if it's not possible, for example, for COVID-19 reasons, then uh, there are creative, <laughs> creative solutions where, 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 you know, videos are used and, and just cameras are used where students work or, or students. Uh, for example, my son is learning to be a baker and they are now, now learning remotely. So they get the instructions, they bake at home, they take pictures <laughs> and submit to, to the teacher. But it's not the same, obviously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Marini. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, maybe other participants have their questions to Dr. Marini. I have one question, uh, Dr. Malinin. Uh, I would like to ask about the uh, Edu in V project experience. Uh, how the Edu in V project influenced, uh, impacted for uh, your experience and for your university? So the the impact of Edu in V project on my university. Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you, Botagos. I think we have learned a lot from our partners in, in all the partner universities in, in Denmark and, and uh, Spain and Kazakhstan and Russia. And 
I think uh, apart from the cultural learnings uh, from the different cultures, uh, I've always find it so interesting uh, to, to learn about the systems, how they work in different countries. And, and then obviously the, the people's new ideas, like the teachers that have created these courses uh, in Edu Envy projects have been really imaginative uh, and uh, go, gone beyond their own experience um, and learned a lot, I think. And we have all learned through this project. So it's an honor to be part of this. Uh, dear Dr. Sisko Malinin, we are also very glad uh, to uh, show our attitude to university, to your experience, because during workshop uh, our participants had a very uh, good opportunity to now um, e learning tools before the COVID-19. And so we were very ready to the COVID-19 situation for the mm -hmm. online education because mm -hmm. we use it uh, during our classrooms The, uh, for example, Socrative and the Canva, for example, Canva, mm -hmm. I use always, uh, this is mm -hmm. good. Uh, program and also the Socrative is also very very good for the um, assessment for the feedback of the students mm -hmm. and I know that uh, our participants can uh, can use uh, all of these um, mm -hmm. programs for their feedback because there are a lot of the uh, programs for this uh, e learning tools and e learning tools can help us to uh, give uh, our lectures our um, practical classes more effectively for mm -hmm. students and more interesting for the students and mm, i think you uh, give uh, very good recommendation to us because finland have the uh, very good experience for a lot uh, for a long time and uh, you share with this experience and more uh, less teaching and more learning this is very good <laughs> <laughs> rules for all of us and thank you very much for your time mm -hmm. thank you i will uh, stay here to listen to uh, uh, maybe the uh, there, uh, maybe uh, some i'm sorry uh, uh, i'm sorry so uh, i have uh, so careful, so uh, with a big uh, interest, listen to the presentation uh, uh, from Mrs. Uh, Professor Mellon. Uh, so uh, could, can, if I may, so I would like to ask a question. So how do you, so uh, during the teaching online, so uh, of course we have changed uh, not only the uh, form of the lecture, so in distance, but we have also changed the approaches how to teach. Uh, and how do you think? So, should we change also the classical form? So, uh, for example, the structure, the order, I mean, the anticipation, building the knowledge, and consolidations. Should we also change this order also uh, when we teach uh, in distance? Uh, do you think that there is a need uh, to start maybe not with the uh, anticipation maybe with another parts when we teach in distance when we have uh sometimes time limit when we have uh, because of the platform because of the uh tools which we use online so do you think uh, that there is so, some uh needs or requirements or desires uh, so which we have to change to break of the classical order of the lesson Thank you for your question. Um, yes, actually I do. Uh, if you think about, if you're referring to an, a live lesson online, uh, and then if your order usually is that you present the, the kind of theory first and then practice follows. So um, if this is repeated uh, regularly uh, on a daily basis, for example, it's very, uh, very heavy for the students um, and I'm not sure if you are familiar with the concept of flipped classroom which means that um, instead of learning about the theory in a live session 
uh, and then going home to practice it alone, you flip it so that the students actually learn the theory at home. So that instead of giving a live lecture, you make a video that they can watch at home as many times as they like. Maybe you have some questions to support their watching. And then when they come to your live lesson, you discuss the difficult points. Or if it involves a kind of assignment, mathematical calculations or, or whatever practical assignment you may have in mind, this assignment is done in a live tutorial in small groups. For example, in, in Zoom, you can divide your students into breakout rooms where they can work in small groups. Even if it's mathematics, they can calculate there together, helping each other, and you can visit them as a teacher. So this would be changing the order, like doing the, the easier part, taking in information at home, and the more difficult part where they need more support together online, where you can help them. Did that answer your question at all? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yes. Malinin. And we uh, have the, some limitation of the time because uh, <laughs> Elizabeth uh, uh, Agerberg and uh, Elaine Homeler uh, have the, some short time and they need to uh, give the presentation for all of, you, of us. Uh -huh, they asked me. And uh, I would like to say uh, thank you very much for the time and thank you very much for all the uh, participants that they give the questions because they were very interested by uh, your presentation and I think they have the more questions. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, dear uh, Dr. Uh, Elena Homler and uh, Elizabeth Agerbeck, you can uh, present us your presentation. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we were very happy to um, see uh, and hear Cisco's uh, presentation because it, it definitely um, links to our presentation in the sense that we are working with uh, the same level of um, third level um, teaching where the students are more active and one of the ways uh, we do this and that we also worked with in the Edu Envy project was to uh, incorporate industry projects into the curriculum. So the idea is uh, simply to um, go outside of the university and ask a, a company to give uh, a challenge to our students that they should solve. Um, so our presentation is about how we are working with this new form of uh, pedagogy. Um, we are, as uh, Botikos um, said, from a University of Applied Science in the middle of Denmark with uh, 12,000 students and uh, we both teach at a BA in Digital Concept Development, a multimedia education. Um, the UCL strategy um, is part of why we try to um, work with industry that close. Uh, so normally a university just uh, creates um, uh, students for the industry to hire, but here we try to make a real obligating learning environment together with industry so that the industry is like a partner in teaching um, the students uh, because we see that as something that creates value for all uh, partners, both the students, the teaching staff, the industry and uh, the college. That's the strategy of our university college. 
we have been working with um, a lot of different industry um, people. Uh, you might recognize NASA, which is the um, uh, yeah the American um, space agency. Also, um, in the sense that they have put forward uh, challenges uh, for our students to to help them solve. Uh, we have also worked for the Danish Cancer Society and for uh, a Spanish uh, brand like Disigual, uh, a fashion brand. Um, so it's something that we have found out you can do with also international partners as well as national partners. Um, the premise. Uh, I should take over here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> because. Um, we do this, and it's true, as Elizabeth just stated, that it's uh, very close connected to Cisco Malinan's uh, speak about flipped classroom and uh, how we transform our role as a teacher. Because we are using the phenomenon, phenomenon called problem-based learning. And that is a solid premise for integration industry projects into university teaching, as it says here. And uh, the question is, what is problem-based learning? And the answer is that there is no universal accepted definition in literature. But the essence, as we have come up with, is that it's the use of a real-world problem or situation as a context for learning. And this is how we approach learning. This is from a problem-based um, uh, perspective. And why we do it is because it gives uh, these real life cases means that we are teachers. Um, we don't have the solution for the students, just as Cisco was talking about we transform ourselves into facilitators and tutors or maybe just a, a, a resource person. But it gives a lot to the, to, the, to the students. The third role here is what I want to emphasize. And that is uh, cognitive areas we stimulate by using problem-based learnings. And there are five stages here. And the first one is, that it activates students' prior knowledge. And as a human being, we all we feel more comfortable in a new situation if we can use prior experience. And we have students on a BA level, which means they have been students before, and also they have had an internship. So they know how to work with industry, within industry. So they have some prior knowledge here. And then we elaborate their prior knowledge through cooperative discussions. We don't have the answer, but we collaborate with the students and we discuss with the students. And then we reconstruct when they get confused because all students get confused during the learning process. It's hard work, we all know that. But we reconstruct the knowledge they have gained through this industry project. So it fits the problem they are solving right now. So they can see what they are learning right now actually fits to what they are supposed to do for the industry. And then of course, Learning is always on the level of what society expects. We don't sit in an ivory tower and all our knowledge might not be what's used useful in industry right now. So that is, and then of course, it encourages the students' curiosity for digging in. So that's why we take this problem-based learning and use it as a framework uh, for industry projects. Mm? Yeah. Um, so what are the type of problems that we look for when we are working with problem-based learnings? We are looking for innovation challenges. 
because we don't want our students to compete with industry. So we don't want them to just solve problems that the industry already have a solution for, because that's how industry makes money. And, and universities should not compete with industry. So we are working with innovation, that is new things that industry hasn't developed yet or does not have a solution to. And that is a benefit uh, for the students because then their solutions are truly new and it's also a benefit for the industry because this is something for which they have no uh, answer. So with no set answers and no answer book, all partners are, can learn something. So the industry learns something new and the students also learn something new. That's why we choose this type of challenge. Yeah, and here I take over again, sorry, <laughs> uh, because um, we, what we really have a focus on is the transfer aspect. And because transfer is, of course, when you learn something at school uh, and then you have to wait until you take your final degree and then you get a job. And then mostly you have forgotten what you learned and how to use it in real life. Uh, maybe you should flip slide. Thank you. Uh, it's difficult uh, to adapt uh, the learning into qualified action. And here we take theory into action on the spot. And we use it again in the framework of problem-based learning. Could you flip again? Yeah. So here yeah, we take the learning right now, as it says here, not for later. You need to know it right now and you learn how to use the theory in a real life situation and you discuss it with your students. We do a lot of these kind of feedbacks among the students and we take a lot of discussions so they know how to argue, how to reflect on what they are learning. They are very much aware of their own learning process during these projects. Mm? Lisa? Yeah. Um, and now we're going to go in, how do we do it? Um, and just to clarify, we are talking about educations uh, that have subjects. So a Bachelor in Science has um, a subject in urban ecology, for example, and each subject have a number of topics. So urban ecology, the subject has a topic called composition pro properties and volumes of uh, urban soil. And we work with a whole semester. So uh, 30 ECTS points just to set the frame. Uh, so what we do is that when we have an industry project, we have this timeline. We work with a briefing by the industry partner. And these are the six weeks. So around the fourth week, the students come up with their first solutions. And then uh, they make a pitch, a pre-pitch for the industry's partner, where they um, show their first ideas and the industry partner gives them feedback, all facilitated by us as teachers. And then on the sixth week, they give their final pitch for the industry partner. They show them their solutions. And following that, we evaluate their work. While they have that, they still have classes in three subjects, design, digital marketing, and project management. And these classes are like dotted along the six weeks, but with the classes, we try to make the teaching in each subject relevant for the industry project. So we work interdisciplinary in these three subjects. We work together 
to try to support the industry project. So that's the mechanics of the teaching. Uh, and the students work in groups of four to six people on that challenge that they got here and that they are finishing here. Um, yes, we uh, to make this interdisciplinary collaboration possible, we have uh, an analog tool first for this interdisciplinary collaboration. So we have the three projects, or oh, sorry, three subjects here. And here we have the topics taught for each subject. Um, so in uh, digital marketing, it could be something like uh, um, Google Ads or something like that. And then over here, we have the actual projects. So this is like a six week period where each project is worked with in all three subjects. And we did it on magnets to allow us to move topics around because each industry challenge, like the one for NASA, was different from the one for Lego. So we have to change not the uh, topic, but maybe the order of topics to be moved around, which is why we put them on, a, um, on magnets. So each subject could be moved around. This allows the teachers to collaborate on planning their teaching. Uh, so we go together as a team of teachers, in this case, three teachers, and we, we um, work together on preparate, prepa preparing the actual um, course. Uh, we do that before the semester starts. Uh, so each teacher has a lecture plan by the end of this work. We have also worked with an online tool called Miro for this uh, collaboration. Here are the subjects, more subjects in this case. And then here is the project and here are the different uh, topics. So these are the topics of one, this is of another a subject, a third subject, and uh, vice versa. This is the first time we tried it this uh, fall, uh, actually this January, and it, it worked very well. Uh, obviously, this was also due to Corona situation. We had to work um, because we were not together as teachers. Yeah. So just a few pictures of how this implementation looks during the semester. So these pictures relate to this, that we, I show you a picture of this, of this, and of this to see how it actually goes down. And here is an example of a brief by industry back when we were allowed to be together in classes. Um, and this is the industry partner making the presentation. And these are the students watching. And this is, uh, I think it's my hair, <laughs> um, watching also. So of course the teachers are uh, present, but we are allowing the industry to make the presentation and the students to talk. And here the students are working in a group, trying to ideate and solve the challenge that the students, uh, uh, sorry, the industry partner gave them. So they are using tools like post-its and, uh, and also sometimes when this, the, the, this fall, fall 20 and spring 21, we have been working with uh, online version of the same. So they collaborate the same way we do using online tools. And then here's the pre-pitch, you can see Ellen watching here by the side, and here are the two industry partners from an um, uh, yeah, advertising company close to us. And here are the students um, seeing each other um, presenting, and then they get feedback from the partners. 
And here is uh, the students preparing an early prototype of the solution. Uh, so they have something to show the client, this is what you could make. Um, so they each group develops a prototype. Um, and then they have the final pitch, which is a more formal thing where uh, the teachers and the industry partners is like a panel watching each group uh, present their uh, solution and give them feedback. Uh, so it was just a few pictures to uh, see. But we've been working this way since 2015. And what we have found out is that students become more work ready because of uh, transfer, as we uh, talked about, that it's very important to, um, to, that they get to work with what they learn immediately after they learn it. Um, so they know more about what it's like in the workplace. We also see that a larger percentage of students get hired right after the internship by the hosting company. That has uh, gone up from 34% to 46% uh, over a yeah, two-year period. So um, in that sense, we, um, were, uh, we, we see results from this way of uh, working. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation and very good presentation. And I would like to say to thank you for all of you that you share with us your time, you give your time. Unfortunately, we have the very uh, limitation of time and because now the next session of uh, our university, I was already 19 and uh, I would like to say, um, uh, and I wish to all of you successes in your work. Uh, I would like to say uh, that uh, not only uh, EDUNV project, but also uh, other projects mm, I wish to you and uh, experience in other projects also. But also I would like to say uh, thank you very much for your uh, workshops and experience during uh, preparation of our online courses uh, during implementation of the EDUNV projects. And thank you for all. Thank, thank you, you Botagos. Much. Can I just say that I added the links from my slides to the chat, the link to five stage model for designing online courses online tools you can find them in the chat okay uh-huh thank you very much and if you have any questions um you can always send us an email i think botagos has got our email okay thank you very much <laughs>